friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. We've got a real good video coming up for you uh, in just a moment or two. Uh, as a matter of fact, over my shoulder you can see that I am still in the process of editing the video. And it's all about finishes and the problems that I run into when I'm trying to find a good finish. And uh, many of these are recommendations from viewers and I'm putting them to the test. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. But first, I want to talk about some things I've received from uh, viewers and uh, some viewer comments and uh, customer comments and things like that. Okay, the first one is from uh, David McCausland. And he's from, uh, it looks like, you know, I, I don't know how to understand these addresses in Europe because they have uh, like multiple layers. And it says, uh, uh, Craigie, Dundee, Angus, Scotland. I don't know which or any of those <laughs> is the town, um, but uh, then there, I think they have town and county and maybe region or something, and then of course Scotland. So anyway, I know he's in the general area where we're going to be <laughs> before too long in May. I'm playing the gig over there. So David, I first want to just say thanks for the uh, sending me the note, and thank you for the uh, little gift that came in the uh, envelope. And thanks for watching my videos. He says that he enjoys my channel and that uh, it's helped him keep his guitars in good order. And then he goes through some processes that uh, he's used uh, on getting glue into places. He also says that we've inspired him to play some bluegrass music as well. So that's awesome to hear. I just thought you'd get a kick out of seeing what your envelope looked like when it got here. No, that's not from me. Trust me, that's from the post office. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's how it came here. It was They had it in a plastic bag. I didn't think there was anything in there, but I sure enough, I found these pipettes. He sent a half, at least, at least there were a half dozen pipettes still in the, in the envelope. So I don't know how many you sent originally, but I would assume they were all still there. And uh, anyway... So thank you very much for that. I do appreciate the thought, and uh, it's definitely an item that is very useful, and I will put them to use down the road. So thanks again, David. I received a CD, and I've talked to this fellow before and received some of his music via email before, and his name is uh, Joe Romeo, and Joe is in... Uh, well, let's just see if I can even tell you where he's at. He's I know he's in Australia. <laughs> it looks like Narendira, Australia. And, uh, he's got a nice uh, CD that he sent along. Very good singer, very good music. So thank you very much, Joe. I really do appreciate that. The next note here is from uh, Tori in Norway. And it just so happens Tor Tori is... Uh, my largest Patreon supporter to date. So Tori, I first just can't thank you enough for all the support you've given me through Patreon. But Tori sent me a little uh, picture. There's the little desk ornament that I made for Tori. Tori also received the cedar emblem there. And if you remember from the previous video where I talked about sending these out, uh, I said I would send the cedar one to my largest supporter. Thank you very much, Tori. I do appreciate it all the way from Norway. Isn't that cool? That's the one thing that's really cool about the uh, YouTube thing is that it goes all over the world. I uh, get notes and nice com comments from, from every just about every country in the world. This next note is from Richard uh, Finlay, and uh, Richard is out on the Caribbean on a boat. <laughs> and he watches my YouTube videos. He also uh, needed to work on his own guitar out there in the middle of the Caribbean. <laughs> and he wanted a couple of suggestions, so I made a couple of suggestions. He came up with his own creative solution on gluing the bridge back down. He actually put a couple of small bolts down through the bridge pin holes and clamped it that way. Unfortunately, my printer won't print this whole picture for whatever reason, so I can't show you the whole thing but I can kind of give you an idea of what's going on here. He's got a file that's standing up, probably propped, propped against a brace on the inside of the guitar. These pliers are pushing against the file. That's the top end of the pliers pushing against the, and those are vice grip pliers, obviously. The back end of the pliers is pushing against the bridge because 
uh, when he clamped it with the two little bolts going through the, the, the bridge pin holes, it pushed the bridge forward. So he had to find a way to keep the, the bridge from moving forward. When you're in the middle of the Caribbean, you do what you have to do. <laughs> so, you know, he came up with his own unique solution. Good job. You know, I, you got to do what you got to do. I do that all the time. I like to tell people I have a great view here from my workbench by looking out the side window here and out in my field. But his view, I think, has got mine beat pretty bad. Can you see? There's boats out there on the water. <laughs> <laughs> so his view from his workbench has mine beat pretty bad. <laughs> so Richard, I'm glad uh, you were able to get your guitar fixed. Hope you don't get seasick while you're playing it. <laughs> the next comment came in from Paul Horn, and I'll just uh, more or less read what he said. He says, my name is Paul. I purchased uh, both of your videos for the guitar and the mandolin. I finally had time to watch the guitar video today, and all I can say is, wow, this was like someone lighting a torch in a dark cave. For years, I struggled with where chord progressions would go when I was playing unfamiliar songs in jam sessions, and apparently and literally, I could not see the forest for the trees. I can say without any doubt, this is an absolute best music learnings education purchase I have ever spent my hard-earned dollar on. So he goes on and, uh, you know, he just says that he likes my teaching and et cetera, and, you know, very complimentary. So Paul, thank you very much. And at this time, the only one he had gone through was the guitar. And in my opinion, the guitar is kind of a watered down version, if you will, of what you get in the mandolin one. Because obviously I'm a mandolin player. I can get into the mandolin much deeper. If he liked the guitar one, then his eyes really ought to light up when he gets into the mandolin. Thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate that. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about there, I do have video training on both the guitar and the mandolin, and it's my version of how the Nashville number system works on both of those instruments. Now, the mandolin is in goes into great detail. The guitar, I think it gives you plenty of detail in terms of uh, how to go about using the Nashville number system, but on the guitar one, I got to be honest, you probably need to at least already know your chords. Uh, on the mandolin, it takes you from the very beginning of the first time you ever pick up a mandolin, and it takes you all the way through to playing very complicated songs, all in one video. Moving on, this one is from uh, Chuck Rowley, and Chuck says, I recently purchased your mandolin lessons. I downloaded them immediately and then got a little intimidated. So they sat on the desktop for a week. I then watched the first two videos. You showed the full G chord, and as a guitar strummer, I thought there ain't no way. <laughs> because the G chord on the mandolin, the full G, is pretty tough. Believe it or not, it stretches your fingers out there pretty good. But tonight, it started to become easier. He says, now chord changes are still hard, but I think there's going to be fast progress. He just goes on, you know, uh, he's complimentary. He just goes on to say, I want to thank you for sharing your talent and knowledge with the world, especially your music lessons. Once proficient on chord changes, I will hit the Nashville system running, he says. You opened a door I never thought was possible. So Chuck, thank you for the kind note. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for watching my videos. And if you're watching this video, thank you too. Now we'll get into the video that you're actually here for. Put on your big boy pants and your big girl boots because you're going to need them. Well, friends, it's, you know, I haven't had a good rant in a little while, so we might as well just have a good rant right now. You know, in terms of these finishes, you know, I've said before, they all suck. I mean, there's none of them that work good. You know, they just are all crap in my opinion. I mean, that's just my honest opinion. You know, all of them are good if you put hours and hours and hours and hours of work into them. They're all good. But they're all crap because you have to put hours and hours and hours and hours of work into them. You know, and people come up with all these different things like epoxy finishes and stuff, but you're not considering their you're not considering the tonal quality. So you can't just put anything on an instrument. 
you need a good finish that you know hardens up, gets crisp, makes a good you know uh, protective finish, but yet is not so thick and hard that it's not flexible enough to vibrate. You know, I mean, there, there's trade-offs. And I'm not saying an epoxy finish, you know, couldn't be a good sound producing finish. It's just not what I would like to get into. Me and epoxies don't get along all that well to begin with. So, all that to say, I'm still trying all kinds of products. When I complained about this the last time, everybody recommended this and that, and you know, and I, tr I thought, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and buy a bunch of those different things and see what they're like. Well, so far, I'm not impressed with any of them. <laughs> I mean, I'm really not. You know, if you just want the truth, that's the truth. Everybody says, oh, this is great. You'll like this. Well, you got to put it on three times, four times. The lacquer I have to put on multiple times. I might as well just stick with lacquer, you know. There's, there's no benefit, in my opinion. If I can put something on one time and it would go on glass smooth and, you know, or maybe two times, I'd be okay with that. But to have to put it on three, four, or five times, sand it between each time, put it on again, try it again, and then you keep going, it's still not full. It, the grain's still not full. As an example, this is Verithane. And it, you know, if you just look at it from a distance, it looks great. But when you get up and start examining it, then the pores, you can see the pores are not filled. It's just, that's Verithane. That's this stuff here. It's a sanding sealer. You know, and you know, it, it's a nice finish, don't get me wrong, and I could make a glass finish out of this, but I have this is already two coats sanded in between one of the coats, and it's still open like that. You know, I just would say to Verithane, what's your point? <laughs> you know, what did you do for me? Nothing, in my opinion. So, Verithane, you're such a nice thing, but you're going on the shelf. You know, I mean, like, it doesn't do anything for me, in my opinion. Solar is, you know, people have told me how wonderful this is. I've watched videos on this and the videos are always impressive how wonderful these things are. But let's just see if this is any good. I have not tried it. I opened it last night just to see what it looks like and it's a paste basically and you put it on with a spatula more or less. When you put this in the sun or a UV lighting, it dries pretty much instantly. So that's the cool thing about this. At least if you got to put on multiple coats, you can do them very quick succession. All right, so I have the Verifane sprayed on this end. So this end here is open. I'm not going to do any prep to this other than I'm just going to sand it lightly just to uh, give it a clean surface. See, this is a goo, basically. It comes out in a goo, goo form. Well, I've got way more than I'm going to need, it looks like. And what they tell you to do is to, you know, put it on a cross grain. I don't know if I should, I probably won't put that back in the can. I'll just get rid of it, close the can back up here. And, yeah, made a nice mess of all that. That's exactly how you should do that if you're paying attention to the video. Make sure, be sure you make the most mess out of it you possibly can as you're doing this. All right. Okay, I wasn't really prepared. First time I'd ever touched this stuff, so I have no idea. Got way too much, obviously. Now they did say about this stuff that you want to spread it out. I watched some videos and you, you want to spread it really clean and thin. You don't want to leave it gooed up because it's very hard to sand, they said. So anything that's really hard to sand doesn't sound like it's going to be much fun to me, but we'll see. They also said you can wipe it with a rag. I think just I'll do that on this small area here to see and see that looks like that wiped it right out of the pores there to me. So I don't know if that's a good idea or not. But I'll just do that as a comparison to here. That's about as smooth as I can get it. They said to get it as smooth as you can. Pretty much full there. This does not look that full where I wiped it with the rag. Those are two different techniques I saw people using on the videos. 
So I thought I'd try both of them at once. Now I'm gonna expose this to UV light. Well, there's what she looks like after the UV light exposure. You can see it's very shiny still. Pretty much looks just like it did. Though it is, as far as I can tell, it's dry to the touch. It doesn't seem to be sticky or anything like that. You can see a significant difference where I wiped it off. I would definitely say the grain looks more full here than it does there, but this looks more full than this does. This was the Verifine, Verithane, remember. This is the Solar Res. I would say for sure the Solar Res looks like it's doing a much better job. I don't know what I think about the sound of this, though they do claim it's four instruments, so, you know, that's their claim. So, here's some, this is a 220, I believe. I'll start up here and see what it feels like up here. It's almost like it isn't even there up here where I wiped it off because I'm sanding red wood. Not impressed up there because of that. I would say though that it does look relatively full in terms of the grain. When I say relatively, I think I, one thing about it though is that part of the grain is fairly small right there anyway, so that's hard to judge right there. This is more open and, and the pits are still there. This is the only part I've sanded, and maybe you can see it, it looks better, I guess, than this, but not that great either. Let's take a clean piece of sandpaper here, and let's sand this part down here and see what it's like to sand. Now, I'm not, I'm not getting the red, or at least I don't think I am, which is a good thing. I don't like to get the red after I put a finish on. Looks like I'm starting to go through the finish and getting into a color now. I can see that the finish is not white now. I don't feel like it sands all that hard. That's not that hard to sand in my opinion, at least not right now. Now, of course, I'm using 220. Normally, I would use 400 or something on, on a finish. But I thought, well, let's just see what it's like here. And the 220 sands it pretty easily. Well, after one application, I'd say it's better than this for sure. But it's, you know, it's pretty good. So I think we're gonna have to put a we're gonna have to put a second application on this because I can definitely still see the grain. But I can tell you for sure that's more full than this is, no question about it. So I'm much more impressed with this so far. This is this is the only thing. That's even starting to give me the fizz. But put one more coat on here and see what it looks like. Everything's a hammer. Doesn't take much to make a big mess with this stuff, I will say that. One thing about it, this stuff shows up every little tiny line in your spreaders. I think if I was going to do this very much, I would want to invest in some really good spreaders or work on these edges to make them just glass smooth. All right, I'll go expose this to the UV light for about two minutes, and we'll come back and see what this looks like. Well, I accidentally started sanding that before I showed it to you, but so ignoring this section right here where I sanded, if you look at this, that's what it looks like after the second lighting there. And boy, you, you know, you can start to see a depth of finish already. I like that. The grain looks full. I gotta admit, I, this stuff here is starting to look impressive. It says it's a grain sealer, but it also says, I can't believe it's not lacquer. I don't know. It says UV cure, high gloss, lacquer, like finish. Non-flammable, no odor. I can't believe it's not lacquer. I don't know if this is supposed to be the top coat or if this is the uh, just the undercoat. 
It says repeat the above procedure three times. So we've done it twice. Now, I, admittedly, I didn't sand with uh, 400. I sanded with 220. Here's some 400. Let me just cut out a little piece of that and sand this with 400 just to, and then we'll do it one more time and that'll be three coats on top of here. I can tell I'm sanding through that color. I can see, even though I'm colorblind, I can see there's color coming off on this. So maybe, you know, they say three coats, but I don't see how you could do it in three coats. What I'm seeing is I'm still seeing squeegee marks in it though, so it's like I'm getting it smooth, but it's but there's still squeegee marks in it, and I'm not happy with that at all. In terms of a green filler, it seems to be pretty good. In terms of a total finish, I'm not so sure. You know, now that I've sanded it with 400, let's give it at least one more application and see what we think. I'm going to try to do it delicately enough to leave some finish on there this time. I'm more impressed the very first application and not so impressed after that because, you know, once it's smooth and you're using a squeegee, you seem to be taking off almost all of it. So it's like, you know, what are you, what are you really accomplishing? Doesn't seem like it's really doing much on the second and third coats. That supposedly is the third coat, but you can see it's not that easy to put it on, you know, glass smooth, if you will. I even tried these and they don't work that good either. I thought that would work really nice, but it doesn't. In fact, it makes, it makes more lines than almost anything. This is the best thing I got so far and it's not that great. If it was smooth and you could leave it like that, it's a nice, deep, luster-looking finish. Well, I'm going to go expose this and we'll see what we got after the third try. That's what it looks like, third application, two minutes under the UV. It feels hard. I don't see any soft spots or, you know, it does seem to cure. That part there, they... Seem to have that down pretty well. If, I, if you could put it on smoother, I'd be really sold, but not getting it that smooth, kind of a problem. And can you imagine putting that on a whole guitar? You know, you're never gonna get it very smooth. I mean, I don't care how hard you try. Here's another piece of 400. Let's give it a shot and see what it does. I don't know what to think. It's it's got some good points for sure. It definitely fills the grain definitely better than anything I've tried so far. That part, there is no question about that. I'm not so impressed with the rest of it. Well, I've been sanding it with the 400 here a little bit and you know, I don't know what to think. I don't like it. Just look at the splotchiness and the weird junk. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's a problem with my UV lighting, but it seems to be dried. It seems to be cured. Why is it doing all this weird splotchiness? Maybe that's not totally cured all the way through. I don't know. But even if that's the case, uh, like these lines that it creates, they're hard to get rid of. And by the time you get rid of them, then you've kind of sanded through again. And I don't know. Maybe I get better at it. I don't know. But I'm not impressed at the moment. I mean, I, I like, I love the fact that it's quick and it fills the grain really fast. That I like. And maybe one application and then go over it with lacquer or something maybe would be a good idea. But right now, this is not that great. Or if you could put it on glass smooth and leave it the glass showing it might be okay. But I gotta tell you, you know, somebody said this was hard to sand. I think it's very easy to sand. 
I don't see any problem with sanding it at all. My problem is I think it's too easy to sand. I think it's too soft. I don't know. You, you know, you just can't trust what you see in a lot of these videos because most of the time, especially things like, you know, these, I don't know, I hate to use any name brands, but, uh, you know, all these different products, like these specialty super glues that are supposed to be glass finishes and all this crap. You can't even stay in the room with them. They're that strong on your eyes and stuff. You know, sure, they show it in the video how wonderful it is, but use it, use it one time and you'll go, oh my gosh. I mean, it burns your eyes. You can't even be in the room with it. It's that strong. That's some of those other products. This stuff here doesn't seem to be any problem on your eyes or nose or anything, but it's, but it's just blotchy as heck. I'm not impressed with that at all. It sands so easy that I'm beginning to think it's gonna hurt the sound. It's too soft, I think. It's just not what I expected at all. I was expecting it to sand smooth and, you know, uh, all one look. And there's no one look to it. There's just, it just, you can just see how it just is just weird looking. In fact, I think I'm just gonna take this to my thickness sander, get rid of the finish on here, try it again, leave it under the UV longer and see if that makes a difference. Cause maybe I didn't give it a fair shake. I'm wanting this to be the thing because of the speed of filling the grain. I mean, this took nothing to fill the grain. The grain is full. I am tickled with that part because there's been nothing that's even come close to this on filling grain. But almost everything looks better than this. That's the sad thing. Well, in case you couldn't gather it from my comments so far, I don't have a lot of patience when it comes to these finishes with all their claims they make. Ordinarily, I don't give them a second chance because either they work or they don't work. This one is, on the verge of working and because it's complicated with the UV lighting and etc I'm giving it a second chance because maybe I didn't do something right I've sanded this wood off clean it, this is a better test anyway because now the wood is real you know smooth clean like it would be on my guitar we're going to give it one more shot with this, just for those people who are going to be correcting me on everything. The UV lighting is already on. It's warming up. You know, it's been on for five minutes already. So by the time I get this in there, that UV lighting should be up to temperature and should be ready to go. I'm going to expose it to the UV lighting for about five minutes this time, just to be sure that I haven't, you know, underexposed it. I've got it uh, this time instead of just holding it there and waving it in front of the light you know I was standing off to the side I wasn't directly in front of the light but instead of waving it in front of the light um, I'm going to just leave it clamped up and held in front of the light like this and uh, we'll let it set there for five minutes and see if that makes a difference. At least I'm giving it a second shot. That's more than I can say for most of them. I'm wanting it to work because this is the only thing I've found so far that actually does fill the pores. But I sure don't like what it looks like after you sand it. It just doesn't look good at all. Well that went on smoother, but as you can see it's still not very smooth. It's about as good as you're going to be able to do. I don't think anybody's going to get it any smoother. I'm just gonna go put that in front of the UV light, see what it does. Well, it sure looks impressive when you first get it off the UV light. It looks impressive. It's been there for five or six minutes now curing. And then I, the last 30 seconds or so, I just kind of moved it around in front of the UV light like this to just try to make sure that it was, you know, fully exposed and it feels dry. I don't feel anything, you know, wet. Nothing feels, like even where it's built up here, it feels like it's cured. There's nothing that feels sticky. So let's try sanding it again and see if it sands better this time. And for those people who get on me that I don't use a sanding block, I'll use a sanding block this time, but I don't think that's got anything to do with it. 
And those ridges, you know, I tried to get them as smooth as I could get them and they still are there. They're a little tough to sand out. Now here again, we're starting to get into these weird splotchy looking things, like right here. Why is that doing that? And that's not even a built up place. That's a low place, if anything. Once again, I'm not impressed. It's, it starts making these like soft spots or something. It, I wouldn't call them soft spots, but it's just some, for some reason, it picks places to just make this powdery mess. And I don't know what's going on there. I'm just, I'm just not impressed with the way this stuff sands. It just, I don't know, maybe I'm expecting too much. I don't know. I just don't know what to think about this. Um, you know, I guess I've sanded through it here in these two spots. Uh, but you know, it's hard to sand it smooth because it, you know, when you put it on with that squeegee, it builds up, it, it just builds up unevenly. Um, you know, if you could spray this on where you get an even coat, you know, I, would, I tried my best to make that as even as I could. And just think about that on the whole instrument. If you put that over the whole guitar, gee whiz. And it's, it's been a job just sanding this much back to try to get it smooth and even. I don't know about this. I, I love the fact that it fills the grain. Love that. But dang. All these other problems that, you, that come with it just don't they don't make me think it's worth it at this point you know that's just one little tiny space and I can't get it smooth on that let alone a whole guitar with all the curves and holy mackerel I could it'd just be a nightmare sanding that because I've sanded a lot on this trying to get it smooth and I can't get it there see wherever you're going through it I guess it does this it gets powdery like that yeah, see, I went through right there. If I could get it on smooth, I'd be likely to go with this. But I can't, and I don't think I could possibly get it on smooth on a big surface. Uh, what a shame. I don't know. I don't know. I'm a glutton for punishment. I don't give up easy when something looks like it might have potential. I'm going to try putting one more application and one more UV cycle. I can't believe I'm going to be going this way because it just, I can't imagine trying to get this smooth on a whole guitar. It's just impossible to get it smooth. That's the smoothest I've gotten it to go on because I really put a lot of pressure on the squeegee and wiped it all the way off. Let's see what that looks like after we cure it and sand it. The vote's still out on this, though I'm not liking it too much at this point. I love how it fills the grain. I hate how it sands and how it looks after you're sanding it. So, I haven't ruled this completely out yet, but I may have to do some more research or, or some more testing. I spent a ton of money on this stuff. I don't even remember how much, but it was ridiculous, in my opinion, for how little you get. This is called uh, Crystalac. This is from the Crystalac company, and this is a sanding sealer and a top coat. These are both water-based, and everyone just sings their praises until I saw a video last night who, did, who was not impressed with it at all. So, I have no opinion because I've never used it. The only opinion I have is I haven't been a fan of water-based finishes so far, but you know, here we go. This says brush or spray on. I'm going to brush it on. This is, in all fairness, this has been on the shelf for several months. I don't even know how long. But I heard the shelf life on this is supposed to be virtually forever, so I don't think it should be a big issue. 
It's the first time I've opened it. I've never opened it before. I have no idea what to expect. I'm just going to brush it on. We're just going to do a test from about here up. And this is the sanding sealer. I'm going to go across grain to try to give it a fair shake here. It's about as even as I can get it to go on. And I don't know what the directions say in terms of wait time, but I'll read the directions here and see what the wait time is. Dry time, 30 minutes to an hour. Recoat, one to two hours. Coverage, four to 500 square feet per gallon. Obviously, we're way short of a gallon here, so we might get two feet out of this, I guess. I don't know. Um, we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Got a little speck of something on it there, which wasn't good. I don't know where, where that came from off the bottom of that can, I guess. We got it smoothed back out there, so we'll give that an hour or so to dry, and then we'll see what happens. Here's the solar res after drying for about 10 minutes under the UV. I mean, it feels totally dry. It doesn't feel like it's wet at all. I've got the 400 here. Let's and keep in mind this was the test that where I squeegeed it off flat as I could get it. I'm not impressed. The sanding on this is just a pain in the neck. And it, it's not hard to sand exactly. It's just that it doesn't sand even. That's my complaint. It's not hard to sand. It just doesn't sand even at all. It's actually incredibly easy to sand, in my opinion. It's just that it doesn't sand even. Golly, what a pain. I can't imagine doing that on a whole guitar and trying to get that even. Just doesn't look right to me at all. I've got one more test with the Solar Res, and I've definitely never given any product that much of a chance. So this is its last chance. What I'm going to do is sand this down one more time. I'm going to put it on absolutely as thin as I can put it on with that squeegee all over the whole thing. One even coat, sand it off, spray it with lacquer, see what happens. To me, that's the only way you could possibly use this and make it look halfway decent, in my opinion. If, it, if, it, if I can sand it perfectly smooth after just one application and it fills the pores, I'd be happy with that. So in other words, this only ends up in the pores, basically. This is your final chance, Solares. You better make good if you're going to make good. You know, I did notice one thing, and in all fairness, I didn't stir this up. And it does say to mix thoroughly before use. So you could lay it on me that I didn't stir it up and mix it thoroughly. I don't think it's going to make any difference, but maybe it will. I seriously don't think that has anything to do with this. Then again, I've been wrong before. Okay, the idea this time is to put this on as thin as I can put it on and just fill pores, period. Okay, this one's every bit's coming off other than what's in the pores. Here's the Crystal Act test after about, oh, 15 or so minutes, 20 minutes maybe, and I see no grain filling whatsoever going on there with their sanding sealer. It's soaking in, it going down in the pores, so I just say to them, what's your point? That's after about an hour and a half of drying, and it feels nice and dry. It's smooth, it's slick, but it didn't fill anything as far as I can tell. Um, I'm going to give it its second coat, but I've got very little hope for this, and more than likely, Crystal Lac is just going to go back on the shelf, because uh, I don't see this making any miracles in the second coat. I will say 
in all fairness, it went on very, very smooth, dried very, very smooth, but that's not the only criteria. I want pore filling. And you know, another thing that people rant about is going across the grain like this. That's the only way you can fill the pores. I see very little difference when I do it both ways. I've tried it both ways and I get very little difference in results. I, with every product, I've tried it both ways. But to give it the benefit of the doubt, I went across the grain there at the end. So it's all across grain. It's very smooth. That's the one thing I will say. It's very easy to apply. It goes on very easy, but that's where it seems to stop to me. I'm going to give Solares one more try. One, this will be the third and final test. If this, if it doesn't pass this test, then it's just going on the shelf. I have re-sanded this through my thickness sander. I'm going to take the 220 and knock down the grain a little bit because that's the way the guitar would be. The guitar would be sanded to 220 and so I want to sand it to 220 first and then I'm going to put on the thinnest coat of the Solarex I can put on and my intention is then to sand that right back off and go over the top of it with lacquer to see if that actually works and to see if it fills the grain that way. You know, I, I'm not trying to make these things fail. Heck, I'm looking for something that works. And I wouldn't spend this much time on this product except for the fact that it actually does fill the grain. It's just, I don't know what to do with it after that. It doesn't seem like it wants to get level and smooth and, and nice after that. It doesn't play fair after you fill the grain. Well, I've back, I'm backing up and I'm gonna punt here because I don't feel like I'm giving this a proper test on uh, real open grain wood. That piece of wood that I was using with this, I feel like it's already partially filled. Even though I sanded it down, this has not been finished. So this is a better test for the final test of the solar res. So that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna test it here. Now I feel like in order to test it properly, I need to sand this down to the um, 220. The point is, I just want it to be relatively smooth on top and have the holes, and then I want to see if this is going to work. Okay, this is the crystal lac on this end, and it's, pre it's pretty much dry already. And that's two coats, and as far as I'm concerned, it didn't really fill anything. It just didn't. I mean, you can make excuses for it if you want, but it just didn't fill anything. It's a beautiful finish, it's smooth, it's slick, it's easy to apply, it cleans up easy, it's wonderful stuff, it just doesn't fill pores, period. Got no complaints about it, except that it doesn't fill pores. So the Crystal Lac is on the shelf, period. It ain't gonna be used. This is fresh open wood here. I've sanded it to 320, and we're gonna give Solaris one final test, otherwise it's going on the shelf too. The final test is, I'm gonna put it on here as absolutely as thin as I can to make it easier to sand. It is very difficult to sand this smooth, in my opinion, and get a great, smooth, consistent finish on it. This stuff goes a long way in terms of coverage. All right, so now it's basically, I'm in the mode of take all of that off. So if I was doing a guitar, basically I'm gonna go over this and take off every bit of it that I can get off because it just doesn't sand consistent in my opinion. It looks like it's filling some of the grain, but honestly it doesn't look like it's doing that wonderful either. But this is the last chance. I'm not gonna give it another chance. It's just, you know, I can't milk something to the point where it, it's either gonna freaking work or it's just not gonna work, period.
I mean, I got my old school method, which works just as good as these methods. This is the Crystal Lac, this is the Solar Res. Notice the difference in color, it is significant. So there's another strike against this. I think this is getting too dark. This is, if anything, changed it to the lighter side. I don't know. I think the good old lacquer is about as good as it gets. I'm just gonna sand this off. You know, one coat of this filled the grain better than almost anything else, but it doesn't look like it's filled it enough. So, and with the color differences, unless this sands off and comes back to color, this stuff's going on the shelf too. So what have I learned? Absolutely nothing. There's no product out there, in my opinion, that works. You know, maybe I'm a harsh critic, but I don't think that's asking too much just to find a product that fills the grain and then relatively simple to sand off, which I can tell you for sure this is not. You know, you can, you can see the color differences there that it's making in the wood. So you'd have to get every bit of it off to get it even. And I'm done. You know, I'm, I, I'm, if it's this hard on this little tiny piece, there ain't no way I'm gonna do that on the guitar. It would take me the rest of my life to sand it off. It kind of loads up on the sandpaper. It even loaded up before on the other stuff. I just didn't show it. In fact, it flakes off just like that. Big, big flakes that it loads up. It's just, just not gonna happen. We're going back to plain old lacquer. I'll use the lacquer sanding sealer under it and then the lacquer on top. And the only reason I use the sanding sealer under it is that it's a quick drying, you know, of course the lacquer dries pretty fast too, but the sanding sealer seems to dry a little bit faster and maybe even a little bit easier to sand. So I can get that first protective coat on there and then I'm gonna do the detailing of the instrument. So that's, this is, I'm done. If it seems like I have no forgiveness, well, I don't, you know, seriously, I'm just looking for a black and white, straight up product. I don't want to have to make excuses for it. I want to say, hey, look, guys, take this, put it on there first. You'll love me. No, I haven't found that product. I have tried dozens of products, guys. You don't have to go telling me about this one or that one, because more than likely, I've already tried it. I am just sick of this. And, and then the hype on the YouTube videos is just that. It's just hype. I think these people are getting paid to hype the product. You can say, oh, you just don't know how to use it. I've been doing this 40 years. I know how to do this kind of stuff. And let me just back up and make it perfectly clear. Every single one of these products is a fine product in its own right. I got nothing against any of them in its own right. They all finish beautifully. They clean up easier than lacquer. You know, you can go on and on and on and on and tell me how wonderful they are compared to anything else. And they're great products. But not a single one of them fills the pores and then is halfway easy to sand off. The only one that came close is the Solar Res. And I am not gonna do a whole guitar that way. That's just way too much work. Now, maybe it's just the wood I'm choosing because Paduk is not easy. It's not forgiving. Granted, I understand that, but that's what I'm dealing with. So I'm going back to lacquer because it's pretty much straightforward, black and white, you know what you get. <laughs>